So you went back and forth with Bazemore on Twitter about his comments about you and Steph battling for that scoring title. Congrats on that. What's your reaction to him more recently saying, Bradley, that he's just joking around? He said, we got guys hurting hamstrings trying to keep up. Talk to me. I didn't like that. That I didn't like the last part of the comment. Uh, the first half of it about what Steph was doing was, I'm, I'm with you. Uh, 49 and 29 minutes is, I think everybody in here can agree that that's remarkable and yep. truly amazing, right? So nobody's arguing that. Uh, but I didn't mention you. I didn't. I, my hamstrings have nothing to do with why I go out there and play the game. And for me to injure my hamstring and then you kind of make a joke about it, I don't. I don't take that too fondly, honestly, um, because I take pride in being somebody who my first four years, I was always labeled as an injury prone guy. I was always labeled as somebody who couldn't stay on the floor. Um, so I take pride in my body. I take pride in being on the floor and being available for my team and, uh, and giving my team the best chance to win. My main focus is getting us to the playoffs and that's all I'm focused on. And so uh, that was just all I was just trying to kind of get my point across. So just keep it, keep, your situation over there is just keep it hoops. Uh, you know, don't don't make fun of something that that's not funny. Bradley, I know you you've answered like how it's more important for you to help your team win than to win the scoring title. But but Russ got his triple double locked up. Y'all are in the play-in tournament. You ain't getting that. Like you know, it is what it is. You're gonna have to play too. Come on, you and Russ don't have any side convos. Like, all right, bro, let me let me do my thing and see if I can get the scoring title over Steph Curry. Honestly, no, Max, because nothing's changed. Nothing's changed for me. I've been doing the same thing. I've been playing the same way I've been playing the last two, three years. Nothing's changed. Um, I feel like I've been putting up big numbers, but a lot of those numbers, I've been taking L's. I've been, <laughs> you know, so now you're not, we're in a position where we're winning. You know, we're playing some of the best basketball we've been playing all year and at the right time, you know, so that's always been my main focus and priority. Russ is a machine. Russ is, <laughs> we all know that Russ is going to go out there and do what he do night in and night out. And my job is, is try to give us the best opportunity and chance to win. And my ability might to score does that. You might want to have that conversation. That. You might want to have that conversation. <laughs> a scoring title over Steph Curry? Are you out of your mind? Your, your seating isn't going to change. He got it, his triple-double. It <laughs> it's your turn, brother. What's going on? Wow. <laughs> You never know what can happen in these last couple of games, Max. We might be able to move up seven, eight. You know, we mm. might, you know, we uh -huh. might have some, some help from some other teams. That's true. That's true. You could move up. You, you, I mean, you know, you that's true. You that's never true. know. You can so, still grab eight. But I'm with you. I'm with you on that. It would be, it would be remarkable to be able to win that. But that's never. That wasn't a goal of mine at the beginning of the year. Uh, so I'm not going to make it one now. But if it happens, it happens. I will be happy. I'm not going to sit here and, and be naive about it. So, Brad, your teammate Russell Westbrook passes the big O for most triple doubles of all time. What, what was it like having a front row seat to seeing him make history? And what has he meant to your team this season, especially what he's done in this second half? Well, I'll start with what he meant, uh, what he means to our team, man. He's, man, heart and soul, you know, because it was always the misconception of Russ, um, you know, and how he is as a teammate, how he is as a person, <laughs> how he responds to coaches and things like that. And, it's the total opposite. You know, he's all about the team. He's all about winning. He's all about getting better. Uh, and he's all about pulling his teammates up and trying to get the best out of everybody. And I think that's something that's helped me this year, you know, and seeing his mentality and his approach to the game night in and night out. He's an MVP. You know, he's the first ballot Hall of Famer. And, you know, now he holds the record for most triple doubles in the league. And to sit there, share the floor with him, and then last night to witness that, it's been, I, I ask him, like, how does he do it? You know, um, because I see him banged up. I see him injured. You know, I see him playing through all type of stuff. And, you know, he's constantly putting up the numbers. He's constantly giving us chances to win. And, you know, that's exemplary. You know, I, I take pride in that and, and his work ethic and his approach to the game. And it's just a trickle-down effect to the rest of us. Bradley, uh, when you guys got, when the trade was made, it's like, oh, hold up. Russell Westbrook and Bradley Beal on the same team. I was sitting here saying that's an elite backcourt. There's no Steph and Clay. What's the best backcourt going to be? Because there was no guarantee Kyrie and Harden would play well together or that you two would, right? We have to wait right. to see how this would shake out. You knew Chris Paul and Devin Booker were going to fit. But how are you going to fit with Westbrook? How is Harden going to fit with Kyrie? Boy, you all answered that question. But my question to you 
about both of you and your team's performance this year is why did it take so long for you, for Bradley Beal and Russell Westbrook to figure out how to lead the team to wins together? I don't know, Max. I don't want to sit here and give you a list of excuses because we got a million. You know, we can sit here and say COVID hit us. We can sit here and say you know, Thomas Bryant was injured. We know at the beginning of the year we didn't have him uh, for the whole year. And I dealt with injuries throughout the year. Um, didn't really have a full gel of team. We had 50 different lineups. We had brought guys up from the G, um, signed some two-way guys, signed some 10-day guys. You know, so we've had, we have a list of excuses, you know, and I'm not going to sit here and say that's those are the causes, you know. So honestly, it was just a matter of us just clicking. And I couldn't really point to what it was, but once we won one game, it became two and three and four and five. And we just stuck to our guns. We didn't change what worked for us, you know. Um, and I think the biggest thing is we decided to start playing defense, you know, and I think. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> defense, underrated, underrated in the it's always the right same. Now. It's always the same in the NBA. Yeah, we decided yeah. to start playing defense. We started winning. Look about, at that. About that time. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I guess, you know, it's, it was just a, it was just the right time, you know, right before the playoffs. Obviously, we, we wanted to give ourselves a chance. Coach Brooks actually broke it down right after All-Star break and kind of broke them down in a series of fives, you know, our games of series of five, and let's just approach it that way and, and we'll try to win each series, get three out of five. And we've been doing that. We've averaged, I think it's like 3.3 wins or whatever it is. So wow. we're, we're putting ourselves in positions to win. So, um, you know, now it's just a matter of capitalizing. No question. Uh, two things before we let you roll, real quick. The hamstring, not making light of it over here. I want you to know that. When can we expect you back on the court? Oh, uh, soon, hopefully. Um, okay. I know it's, it's not not too serious, uh, which is a blessing um, because I know how strenuous these these injuries can be, and I know how you know scary, and you can easily tweak it again or possibly compensate on the other side. I've seen it all. I hear it all. So um, I'm definitely going to be. A little cautious with it, but at the same time, I understand that, you know, playoffs are right here. So I'm definitely working my tail off to get back. I'll miss the, you know, the game tomorrow here in Atlanta, but uh, I'll be reevaluated on Friday and we'll see where we go from there. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.